Right, hello and welcome. This is our second tutorial. Um, and we're going to create this very simple bolt which you see in the picture. Now, there's a couple of things I want to point out with, with this. Um, it's actually quite a simple product. But when you draw it and when you measure something like this, I want you to start thinking about how was it machined. Um, and there's a couple of particular features on this bolt that can only have been put there the way it was machined. Now, bolts traditionally are made out of extruded bar, and that's to say this hex um, was already on the bar. It wasn't made out of round stock, it was actually made out of he hexagonal stock. Um, the other thing is, I want you to think it was probably made in a machine that resembled a lathe. Certainly a CNC lathe, because of the quantities they would have been manufactured in. Um, and that has two consequences. One is you're always going to get a radius under the head where they turn this diameter towards the head of the bolt. And so you're going to have this radius here. And that would have been on the tool. And the other, because it was made in a lathe and the component would have been turning or rotating, um, the chamfer that appears um, just under the hex, where it breaks the hex as it meets the uh, faces, top and bottom, um, is actually going to be circular in, in shape and that's going to affect the way you actually draw draw this bolt. Now just quickly next to this bolt I'm going to do another hexagon shape. Start 2D sketch and I'm going to select my XY, XY plane and I'm going to select it from the browser over on the left, left hand, hand side here. Let's just click that and I'm going to draw this right next to this, this one. So let's select polygon shape. See, so it's defaulted to six sides. And let's just draw our hex really quickly. Let's put a dimension on it. Now it's an M8 bolt, and the distance across the flats on an M8 bolt will be 13 mil. It would be 13 or, or 12. Um, measure the one you've got in front front of you, and um, that will help you to vi visualise what you've got. Let's just finish that sketch and let's now extrude it. Okay, it's defaulted to six and a half mil. That should be the thickness of a bolt, the um, head on the bolt. Let's just hit OK. Now, we've obviously got our chamfer command on the top ribbon here. But if I now chamfer this, it's going to chamfer the edges. And if you see, as I chamfer it, it's not actually giving me the correct representation of a bolt. Okay, that is not a turned on shape, that is a shape that would have had to be done on a milling machine or by an operator with a file, um, been put on off afterwards. Um, and that obviously isn't how a bolt has been machined. If you look here, our chamfer has actually been put on, you can see the circular shape it actually goes up to there. It's definitely been turned on. Right, let's start a brand new sketch, brand new page. Okay, go up to I, standard, and let's hit create, and I'll show you how we went about this. Start 2D sketch, and let's select our XY plane. Now, we're going to use a construction line here as well, because I don't actually know the distance across the points, um, from point to point on this bolt. So I'm going to use um, a construction line, and I'm actually the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my hexagon. Six sides. If you come up here, hover over, we can see construction. Let's just draw a hexagon, which is going to create our construction. And now let's dimension that. Let's just hit down, and now let's dimension, and again snap to two of the parallel sides and let's put in 13mm. Now I'm going to draw a circle. Let's unhighlight the construction, select circle, let's snap to the middle, cursor turns green, and now let's snap to one of my points. And let's finish that. So that is the bar or the shape I'm actually going to use. Let's extrude it let's put in 6.5mm. Right, 
it's actually onto this little um, tree wheel mint I suppose this little shape I'm going to create my chamfer so let's now put our chamfers on the other thing to look at is it's not actually a 45 degree chamfer it's more of a 30 degree chamfer and let's put a chamfer on. we're going to use 1.2 mil and I'm going to actually put on let's put on 30 degrees if I go back to my extrusion just let's just cancel that let's get back to my extrusion click sketch and turn on the visibility of it let's just rotate it around so we can see the visibility we can actually use that hexagon construction to get our chamfer the right size let's reselect chamfer 1.2, 30, already there ask you to select a face first this is your datum face because we've now got an offset angle and now we're going to select our edge and if you look let's just check the angles and put on the correct direction which it has All right, as you can see our inner diameter of our chamfer now is coming inside our hexagon happy with that? let's click the tick and let's do exactly the same to the back we know our settings are now correct so we can simply select our face select our edge put our chamfer on the back face. It's here OK. If you want to adjust it, let's go up, click our chamfer, right click and edit our feature. If you look here, if I just come and I change some of these numbers, okay, it actually changes it in real time so you can see exactly what effect changing your num numbers have. Very, very useful. Let's stick with 1.2 click OK. Let's just go back up to that sketch, right click and turn off our visibility so it disappears. Now this is the shape we're going to create our hexagon onto and what we're going to do is we're going to create which is um, it's a bit like a cutting die, we're going to remove the outside. So let's start another 2D sketch, select our front face and let's draw our polygon again. Six sides this time we can actually snap to our outside shape so let's do that click done can't extrude that at the, at the mo mo moment if I was to finish that, that sketch and click extrude I can't oh, I can click the outside shape right let's do that let's use a cutting motion and let's just select all let's just see, no it isn't doing it, let's cancel that, come back to sketch, there's an also an edit function here, okay, and what we need to do is we need to create an outside to our die, so we're simply going to make a circle and we're going to make it bigger than our original shape, finish sketch, now let's extrude, click that, hold the shift key, if it doesn't select the inner profile just hold the shift key and it will allow you to add another profile to it cut we're going to go through all let's just confirm that and it removes our outside shape so what we did with that sketch and that extrusion is we basically created a cutting die that has removed the outside and now you can see we've now got the shape of our bolt head. Right, perfect representation. Rest of the bolt, really simple. Start a 2D sketch. Now originally when we started we were selecting planes here. Now we can select a plane on the front of the head of our bolt. Let's draw a circle. We're going to be doing an M8 bolt. Drag our circle out. And now let's enter 8mm and finish our sketch and let's extrude that um, should be 30mm long let's create a solid make sure we're actually creating a shape let's click OK alright basic bolt now 
Autodesk is really handy. We've got a thread function in, in here. If we select the thread and then select that face, if we just go to specification, you can see it's dropped in metric profile. We were in a metric template, so it's automatically picked up a metric profile. And it's recognised we've got an 8mm diameter shaft. And it's put in M8 by 1.25, which is a standard M8 coarse thread. If you're happy, we can hit apply. You can see it's now shown the representation of our thread. Let's just go back and edit that. Edit the feature. And it's not do it the full length. You wouldn't ever be able to thread right up to the head. You're always going to have the lead of the tool, so it's never going to get there. To undo that, we can adjust the length here. And I've got a 30mm long bolt, I'm going to actually thread it for 28mm. So there's 2mm at the top that won't be threaded. Let's click, click OK. Um, in the real world, obviously your bolt is going to hold a feature. Um, the first feature is going to have a clearance hole, hole in. The second feature would be where the thread was. So you would never actually use this piece of bolt, a bolt anyway. You should never really be screwing right, right, right up to the head. If you needed to, you'd have to put a washer under the head, which would account for that plain, plain piece. Now, let's just finish this, this off. We're very nearly done. Chamfer on the end. Select chamfer. Let's do a 45 degree chamfer this, this time. Let's do a 1mm chamfer. Select that edge. Click OK. Let's just use the drop down from chamfer we can use a fillet. I'm going to change my fillet to 0.8 of a mil. Now that's typical for the type of tool that would be actually turn, tur turning this. Very common radius. Okay, and that can be checked in data books. You can check by the CNC mill to see what size tooling we've got, got, got there. You wouldn't ever want to specify too small a ra radius. Smaller rad tools overheat quicker, wear, wear out qu quicker. So you can get away with a bigger rad, always try and get the biggest rad possible on an inside corner. And when you're happy with that, click the tick, it's all done. And that is a pretty good photorealistic version of our M8 bolt. Okay, thank you for listening. Have a go, see how you find it.